I know I'm just going to screw that up. <laughs> it's so strange. <laughs> <laughs> We can fix that. <laughs> yeah, we can fix that if you want. Yeah. I just got back from Augusta meeting with MDOT, so that was fun. And I'm just going to go ahead and mute us until the meeting actually starts because I just put us live. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thanks.
Hey, and we're just waiting for Dan to either operate in front of us in person or join online. Okay, great. I was about to chat, send you a message in your chat saying I couldn't hear you. So good. We can hear you now. <laughs> All right. We can talk later, but I might need to get, I know you ordered some computers, mm -hmm. but I've, I've tried using Teams on this and it's like, I don't feel like it's functioning. It's not enough. It's not much. Yeah, I am. So I, guess I, I might it. need to have a I hate computer just to use Teams. <laughs> That's fine. Uh -huh. I like buying stuff. Let's see Kyle's screen. It's, like, <laughs> it's an ultra wide. Yeah. It's really cool. It's the way to go. I'm never going back to like that. What is it called? It's an ultra wide oh. display, so it goes like like that, wrapped around. Yeah. <laughs> kind of paid. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly. Uh, Doug, do you mind closing the door? Absolutely. I think. I don't know. We should probably just get started. Yeah. This is all recorded anyway, so. They're going to come. But okay, sweet. Question. I would ask Kristen to come as well, but she's not. <clears throat> she's taking time off. So. Oh. I'll have to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, folks, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'll note, first of all, that this meeting is being broadcast and recorded just like every other town council workshop and meeting. So, uh, hello, anybody who's watching in the public. We could probably just do roll call for the sake of, um, sure. you know, process. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'll start with roll call. Um, Councillor Height. Here. Uh, Councillor Meany. Present. Councillor Gass. Present. And I'm Councillor Chapel, and uh, Councillor McGuire should be joining us remotely, I would imagine, soon. Yep. And I have the participants up right here, so I'll see when he comes in. Okay. So the goal uh, for today is I want you folks to go home and I want you to have the best sleep of your lives because you will be peaceful with the knowledge that you know how to use Microsoft Teams and you'll be able to work together on uh, any projects you need to, any communicating on Teams. And I wanna show you how to use the various features of Teams for that reason. So first of all, let me just ask all of you, um, um, among you folks, have you used Teams in the past at no. all? Yes, no. No, I mean, yeah. I've used Microsoft so, Suites, but not, okay. not just Teams. And are you, are you familiar with Teams to any extent? Not really, no. I mean, beyond just using it for council, but uh, we've never, uh, I've never been trained on it or okay. used it. Cool. So um, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm always happy to uh, teach folks how to use some of these great tools that are available to town employees. Uh, and, you know, we, we pay for this, <laughs> the taxpayers pay for it, so I want to see it used as thoroughly as possible. Um, so Teams is part of the Microsoft Office suite, just like basically everything else we use in the workplace, like Word or Outlook or Excel. Can, can, uh, Kyle, actually, I, I just sent a text to Dan, and he, um, he says he's trying to get in, and he sent you an email, so I'm not sure what the problem is. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for that. I, I okay, I'll keep an eye out. I haven't received either from him. Maybe he thinks we're on Teams itself, or 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 what? I'm yeah, not sure. he might. Yeah, it, that's right. Yeah, maybe maybe. Uh, uh, can you send him the link? I can send it. I have. Yeah, it. Yeah, some, all right. Just, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Microsoft Office suite, just as an aside, comprises a lot more than just the programs I just mentioned. Uh, Microsoft Forms is one of them. And if you've worked at me, worked with me at all in the last two years, you've probably seen a form that has been made in Microsoft Forms. It's really handy. Uh, you have some more advanced features like uh, something called Microsoft Power Automate. You have Microsoft Lists. You have Microsoft Task Lists. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That's all to say, Teams is just one tool we have at our disposal, and it's one of the most useful ones, in my opinion. So, I am going to open Teams right now, <clears throat> and this is my own personal. Uh, this is my 
my employee, you know, teams I use for work. I believe I already have access to the team we're working on today. Uh, Chris, is it the town council related projects and activities? That was what I wasn't, I was one of the things I wasn't sure of, which of these town council ones. Was. Okay. <laughs> That um, makes sense, but I wasn't. And sure. Kyle, is there any way you could increase the font size a little bit more? Yeah, I could do that. Just for the older eyes among us. That's better. This is probably even better, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, first of all, that's a great point. If you open up Teams on your computer and you're like, I can't see this 0.3 font size, you can go right up. Yep, that, that's that the right one. Yep, that's Teams. Yeah, so Teams, first of all, is the icon that has the two little people with the T for Teams on it. Um, and to increase the size of your display, like I just did for Anne, up in the top right corner where there is a settings and more button, you have a zoom option and you can lower that or, or increase it. So I happen to be at 120%. If I want to go smaller, I can just zoom out a little bit bigger on small yeah <laughs> i'll try to save Anne's eyesight and uh bump that up again okay perfect thanks so let me just give a quick overview of what we're looking at because when you first when you first open any new program it can be somewhat overwhelming um on the left hand side here are the main functions of teams so the chat function functions very much like say Facebook Messenger, uh, and that is an instant messaging platform where you can talk to, in this case, anyone in our organization. So you can see I do that quite a bit. Uh, the chat function has various features, like you're able to use uh, emojis with folks, you can reply to messages, you can store files among who you're talking with and yourself right in this chat. You can video call them. You can give them an audio call. You can have multiple people in the same chat like I do with here with like Josh and recently departed Nate. I was having a chat with both of them. Um, so this is a really handy messaging platform. Council may choose to use this because uh, it's just really easy to use. Uh, if you have the app on your phone, the, the Microsoft Teams app on your phone, this is all accessible on your phone too, which I find really handy because my eyes are always looking at my phone, basically. Uh, so that's the chat function. I'm going to skip Teams for now, come back to the Teams icon. So the calendar is synced with your Outlook calendar because, again, we're, we're in the Microsoft Office suite. Everything talks to each other. So if you add an item uh, to your calendar via Teams right here, it will show up in your Outlook and vice versa. Hey, there's Dan. Suspension. There he is. Yep, you're in the right place. Yep. Okay. Hey, Dan, can you hear us? He's muted. Yeah, he is. Doesn't mean we aren't. I can hear you. Great. Oh, well, cool. All right. Thanks for coming. I was just, I was just uh, going over quickly an overview of what teams look like for those who haven't like even opened it up before. Um, so we just went over the chat function. Uh, I just noted here how there's a calendar function that um, functions just like the Outlook calendar we all have. Uh, you can you have a dedicated calls panel here. So, you know, one thing I would love to see is if town employees were to like adopt this phone call system, much like we use our office phones, but that's in the future. But it's here in case we ever want to do it. Uh, let me go back to Teams here. So within the application called Microsoft Teams is a function called Teams. You can have multiple teams within Microsoft Teams. Okay. <laughs> uh, the nomenclature can get kind yeah. of confusing. But um, in any case, so you'll see here a few teams that I am a part of. So I have one for Town and Great Communications. 
And this is where things that have to do with communications and information can get worked on. I have a team for myself for FOA stuff because I'm the town's FOA officer. And then I have, um, I already have like three teams here related to the town council. And this is probably just from like tests we've done in creating council teams. Yeah. Um, so I'm not even sure exactly which one is the one we want to use. It's probably not I this it's the one. Green, I think it's the green one. The, the green one. Okay. But I'm not sure. So let's, let's take a look at what this looks like. So this team is called count, uh, Town Council Related Projects and Activities. That is a team uh, where folks can get together and work on projects, and I'll show you now how they can do that. So within a team, over here at the top, there are various uh, panes you can open. So one is just dedicated to posts where you can post to anyone who is a part of this team any kind of like notice or heads up about something, uh, you know, in town hall. So if you were to post something like this, everyone would see it. Everyone who's a part of this team. Way to tell who's on the team. Yes. So currently, if we want to see who's on the team, we can go over to the more options little dot line here. And there, yeah. <laughs> And we can go to uh, manage team. And I see here, there are three owners. So these, so owners are people who can do more of the like administrative stuff of a team, maybe add members, remove members, uh, stuff like that. There are other, there are four other people's, people here, members and guests. So like Kristen's here, Doug's here, Nate could probably be removed at this point. Uh, Marty's here. Uh, so I'm looking at this. It looks like maybe we do want the one called council work. Okay. It has everyone in it. Okay, great. So I'll switch over to council work and we will see there are more people. Nice, okay. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. So yeah, so council work here, there is only one owner, which is probably a good practice. You don't want like too many cooks in the kitchen when it comes to ownership. This email, from what I understand, council chair is something that can be transferred outside. Yeah. Like right now it's assigned to my email account and then yep. it's chair. Yeah, yep. so I believe we designated the council chair uh, title here, which is linked to an email address as an alias for Krista. Uh, and that can be changed whenever there's a new chair. Right. So in any case, there are other members here, including all of you folks and me and Doug. So that's great. So that's, that's the membership here. So let me go back to, so the posts tab here is what I just showed you. There are no posts right here, but anybody can add a post. Uh, there is a section for files, which you folks may not be using at the moment, and I am correct. There, there are no files here. If you wanted to share files in this team, this is where you would drop files. So we could do that instead of using email. We could, if we wanted to share yeah. and edit a document yeah. together, we could just do it. Yeah. Again. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'll say right up front, the more we utilize the functions of this team, the council work team, you're going to cut down on a lot of emails. But the sharing files, for instance, we all have a OneDrive. That's true. If I That's want true. to share a file, I can share a file from my OneDrive. You could do that, yeah. I don't want to end up with files in multiple places personally. Yeah, that, that's fair. Does that complicate a BOA request? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. This is all still accessible for POA stuff. Okay. Yeah. Just trying to make sure it doesn't complicate yeah. my ability. Yeah. Oh, it'll still complicate my life, but it's it, it, you know, not as bad as okay. it could be. <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, I notice it in my work, and yeah, there seems to be all these efforts to discourage using only email. Why do we not want to use email? <laughs> it works, you know. Uh, yeah, it does but work. Old people like me, it's you know what we know. You it, know? Yeah, exactly. It is <laughs> what you know. Um, I think sometimes email gets overused, especially in the age of cloud storage. Um, there are plenty of instances where 
like I I don't send an email anymore when I can just put a file in you know my OneDrive cloud storage and share it with whoever or access it for myself. Uh, you know, sometimes I mean that person has to be looking at their one. I mean, how are they going to know it's there if they're not looking at their OneDrive or? Yeah, it helps to it helps to be on top of you know maintaining your OneDrive, knowing how to access it and how to find stuff in there. And I can also touch on that if you folks want. Yeah. Um, I would just like to email. Yeah, that would be good. I was just going to ask that, Kyle, if you could do that briefly, because I just finished a big project where we used uh, the OneDrive, which I hadn't used previously either. And um, and it, it's good that project is over because it kept kicking me out and uh, and because I it was confused between my two different emails. And um, but that's gone now. So that confusion should be gone. But I uh, I could see the so advantage to using the, the OneDrive budget, which I don't normally use. Yeah, for sure. So here I just opened up my file explorer, which for those who are not as like nerdy as I am, the file explorer is just a really easy way to view what files are on your computer and where they are. So in the same way, you have folders for like your documents on your computer, your downloads on your computer, um, and that you can see this right here under this PC. You can also have in your file explorer a place for your OneDrive. And so here in my OneDrive, these are all the files I have in my OneDrive and none of them are stored on this computer that I'm using in this conference room right now. So it's easy to uh, treat and use your OneDrive in the same way you would use any other folder on your computer. And if any of you want to do that and to make sure you have OneDrive accessible in your file explorer on your laptops, just let me know and I can help get you there. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, I need oh, that. And, yeah. and, okay. yeah. I, I used the OneDrive functionality when I made our retreat packets and I shared the link with everyone. I just had the files on OneDrive and um, I found it worked well if right. everyone was able to access them anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, you shared a link by email. Yeah. Yeah. Right. One drive. the files themselves. So right. No, I understand, yeah. I understand why you don't want to email a big yeah, file. It was, they were, yeah, yeah. 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 As long as as long as I get an email, yeah. it tells me there's a link to what we just need. Not to store files on email because then you know you have different version versions. Right. You send somebody a document and it's yeah, it's, it's a lot of space. And right. That's when I don't get my peaceful sleep. Yeah. That. <laughs> right. Um in, in case any of you couldn't tell by now, I'm a huge advocate of um cloud storage of the Microsoft Office suite specifically. So I'm really glad we're covering this. Um, so yes, that's OneDrive. I can help get it on your computer in this way. If you would like, we can do that afterwards. Uh, continuing with Teams here, uh, as a reminder, I'm in the Teams uh, section and then I'm down here. You probably, if you're looking at your Teams right now, you might only see council work because that may be the only team you're a part of. Right. Yeah. So yep. try going down to Teams right there. Click on that. Well, okay. And then, yeah, so council work right there. So you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Council work. Yeah. Let's click on. Um, yeah. So over here, is, this, there's a tab here called Council Tracking wor Workbook. And this is the place where you folks will probably spend most of your time. So there's a lot to go over here. So let me walk through it step by step. This task list is a way for teams, such as those who are in this council work team, to keep track of all the things they are working on in a pretty visually comprehensible and accessible manner. So I actually haven't looked at this since uh, it was starting to be used in a pretty robust capacity, but I'm really glad there's stuff here for us to take a look at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at this first one. Review Cumberland Farms and Stillwater Contract Zone for Impacts. So this is a task that was added by someone. Sandy, we can thank uh, Sandy Carter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sandy's yeah. probably done a lot of work here. Uh, yeah, that's, she's the only source. Yeah. Yeah, so what Sandy did was she went over to add task up here under the to-do list. She clicked on add task. She entered the task name. She set a due date. And she was able to assign people 
to work on this. So I'll just use Anne and Dan as an example. So after I give it a name, a due date, and people to work on it, I then click Add Task. And now this little card, this card appears on the list of to-do items. So once you click on what you just made, you have more options. So if you want to give it a particular label, if you folks work out some kind of schema to use, you can add, you know, colored labels. Uh, the bucket that this task is currently in is to do. And we know that because to do is labeled right at the top here. Uh, you can mark a task as in progress or completed or not even started yet. You can set the priority for a task. You can set the start date, you know, for good record keeping. So like I'll do today, uh, due date, as I already said, as I already designated was tomorrow. And you can choose whether this task repeats. Can I ask a question yeah. about due date? So sometimes within a task, there are subtasks, like steps along the way yep. in order to complete the larger task. Does the due date reflect the ultimate end date of the, the overall task yes. or, or any subtasks? In it, the due date applies to the task at large. Okay. Uh, so you can type any notes here that you may want. So like, for example, information, maybe backstory, maybe context of a project you can put in here. Uh, and then you can click on uh, show on card and the card in question is what we create over on this list. So once I click check, you see this gibberish apply right here. So Krista just mentioned some tasks and what she was referring to is the checklist feature here. So say you want to break up a project into various parts. You can simply add checklist items to make sure you stay nice and organized for this project. And you can also show checklist items on the card itself. It replaces, if you notice, it replaces the gibberish from the notes section. Once checklist items are done, you can mark them off. Mark is complete. And you'll see the tasks decrease as they're checked off from the card. And, and you can rename the checklist items. Can yep. you? It looks like you can, yeah. Yep, you can, you can absolutely do that. Okay. You can also reorder items, like so. You can add attachments. So if there is a particular Word document that uh, team members here should know, you can add that right here so it's really accessible. Uh, and then you can add comments uh, that will appear in a list right down here. So say someone's assigned one of the subtasks, they could comment that what they did and, that, and then check it off. Is that yeah, they could certainly do that. They could also like maybe say, uh, oh, you know, yeah. completed on October 5th or something, you know, they can add okay. some clarifying stuff if they want, or they could also just do a comment too. Yeah. If, so the important thing I want to note, what's handy is that the notes section here can be edited at any time. Whereas once you publish a comment, that goes right down here and you can't edit it. Notes versus comment. Yeah, and you can't delete it, it's there. Nicely enough, it does tell you when it was sent. That's pretty handy. So that is how is there you- a, Is yeah. there a character limit or anything, you know, in the notes section? I mean, I was trying to, maybe you'll get to this because I see there is a tab called notes, but um, it seems like if this is related to particular tasks and subtasks, um, it might be helpful to, to keep sort of ongoing. That's kind of conforms to for people who are used to Sandy's spreadsheet uh, that we used for as a tracking spreadsheet. Yeah, um, yeah. There was a kind of a comments column there and it, it, would it kind of function as that? 
The notes section, uh, so to answer your question, I don't think there's a character limit. And if there is, it is so big, you're not even going to run up against it. I mean, I would prefer to use the notes section as a like a summary of the project. And then the comments, I think the comments section could be where we note progress or changes yeah. that have been made. Similar yeah, to how Sandy was doing that. First draft to council. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I think those are the kinds of things we'll have to come to some agreement with as far as what the different parts mean. Yeah. I, I'm a little concerned that you can't edit the notes if you make a mistake or some information gets put uh, in. You, you can't edit the comments. comments you right. can edit the notes. You, you can't, well, right. If we use, I, the idea of using the notes as a summary of what the project is makes sense to me. Using the comments until you said they can't be edited made sense to me for updates and things like that. But if you get, inaccurate information in there by error, there's got to be a way to either purge the comments or correct them. I don't think there is. Um, yeah, you know, it, is it is a strange yeah. kind of so admission. Maybe but. we would need to. I mean, I think that's a huge uh, negative, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's con that's a concern of mine as well. If you would just use notes. A system that we can't edit yeah. and make sure is accurate is... Yeah. I mean, if you if you folks want to, you can use the notes section for for all of this. So let's say you know uh, context for projects, and then you know everything below that. This line here could be context for project, and then uh, you can have like a separate update section where uh, every update goes there, and then you can separate it by a line like that and keep going and going like that. That's that's an option too. Absolutely. Yeah, just to keep it a little more organized. Yeah, I mean, that's it is a shame because I think one of the drawbacks from having just that block of text in the spreadsheet was that it just created this density that text. was really hard <laughs> yeah, to monolithic. navigate. And like, it, it was just, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to try to avoid that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Is there a different notes? I, I see, like I said, there's a notes tab at the at the top of the page. Is that sort of a whole different thing, Kyle? So this notes section will link to Microsoft OneNote. Oh, and OneNote. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so I'm happy to talk about OneNote. I use OneNote a lot too. Uh, so just so you know, OneNote is another part of the Microsoft Office suite. It has its own application, but here it links into uh your council work team. And OneNote is really robust. You can do, you can type anything and format anything in OneNote. Uh, that would require a whole other workshop to, to yeah. show, show you how to do that. But uh, I think most relevantly, the notes here do not apply specifically to this task that we just created. Okay. Yep. The notes is uh, meant to cover you know, the entire uh, team. team here. Although what you might be able to do, let's see, wait, 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 can I, oh, oh, I can add a page. Okay, so notes here can function much like a workbook that everyone can see and edit and contribute to. You could have multiple pages if you want uh, for various projects. So like here, I'm gonna just keep the naming schema I've used for a test. So say you're working on one project here, you have all the information you could ever want under uh, this, this page here. You can then create a new page for your next project and your next project and your next project. That could be really useful. But those couldn't, that wouldn't export on any report you were exporting out of the teams. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure how this would export, but I would imagine I would put money on there being away to export yeah. this in a way that would be useful. But would it align with the exports that you would have on the other? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it would. It, it may not be linked in that Yeah. One. But in any case, OneNote is really handy. I would, I'll happily go over this more in depth uh, afterwards. But um, yeah, so that's something. OK, so uh, I just covered basically all features of creating an item on your task list. And you can see Sandy has done a lot here already. So here for the Cumberland Farms one, she has assigned the people, she has set the priority, if this is true or not, I'm not sure, but it's lower for right now. 
uh, and she's put a lot of information in the notes section. I'm just, did everyone get my comment on that test? Uh, yeah, it's right there. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, okay. See so yeah, how easy that was? What do you look under notes? So click on test, the project here. Right there. Uh, anywhere on that white space. Mm -hmm. And then scroll down. All the way down. Uh, and there's oh, okay. Matthews. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, and maybe you're going to go over this in a minute, but you can assign, so you have people assigned to one project, mm -hmm. but then can you assign it back and forth, depending on who's currently working on? You, you can add and remove people to projects as you see. Right, but within that task, it could I, could, it, could like Dan be owning it at one point and then Ann be owning it at another point, but then have them both be on here at all times? Oh, so you know to I mean? own it. To um, own it for like, whatever they're working on at the moment. Yeah, in terms of ownership, I don't think ownership plays a huge role in individual tasks. Okay. Like anybody can go, as long as they're part of this council work team, they'll be able to go in and do whatever they want uh, in this interface here. Okay. And then as people maybe jump off a project, you can always remove them and then add them back later if you want. So, we talked originally about like a sign <laughs> with Sandy. We were talking about like if because sometimes we hand it off and do different elements. Like or sometimes Doug will take it for a while to do his work, and yeah. one of us will take it back. And yeah, and the way I, I don't know. I thought we talked about a way to pass it around, but I'm, maybe I'm remembering. So perhaps Mars is you know, heading a, a sign, right? What was that? Like you've got. There seems to be a distinction between assigned and. Suggestions. Yeah. So the suggested box here, I just pulled it up here. That's just yeah. what Teams is assuming you may want to do. You might, you might so like, it. like, hey, Teams is saying, hey, do you want to add Dan here? Do you want to add Doug? Oh, I and see. I'll be like, sure or, or no. So one thing right now, it's only assigned to Anne. It is only assigned to Anne right now. But yeah. you can have multiple people assigned to one <laughs> task. Yes. And nicely enough, whenever you are assigned a project, you will get an email saying, hey, you've been assigned a project. Get to work. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, that's, what I, that's what I need. I, need that's what I, I guess that's what I'm looking for is like maybe maybe the person, we should only have one person assigned per task, depending on who's doing work on it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. As long as we all can see what's in here. Right. So if, yeah, if the task is under council tracking, then we'll all be able to see it and then yep. you can assign it to whoever you want. Yeah, so here's something else that may accomplish that goal. So right now, we only have one bucket of work and that's just the to-do list. That's the default. But we can add buckets at will and maybe we can like have buckets for individuals work. So like say, okay, I want this test now to go to Dan. I can just drag this over to Dan, and now Dan knows he has to work on it. And then once Dan's done with his uh, part of it, send it over to Ann. Could do something like that. Mm -hmm. what, what about by category, like public safety related, land use related? Yeah, so the buckets can be named however we want to organize this. So if we have a bucket of public works uh, stuff, uh, is there public works you right here? Uh, sidewalks. So, like sidewalks, send it over to public works. So that's a that's there are plenty of ways to organize this as you see fit. Let me you show have multiple buckets. Yeah, you could have multiple buckets. So let me show you something else here. So right but now, just, yeah. this is multiple buckets under council tracking work. Yes, but like if you, you could have a whole different team. We could have a different team. That, right. I mean, you could. You could also, that was, you know, like public works or land use team or whatever. So you can also add, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, no worries. No, please do. Um, you can add a tab at the top here that is perhaps a separate task list. So you don't have to have just one task list in a team. So, like, let's say if you wanted to, 
Dirk Van Hacks. I could add a completely separate task list for just public works projects. So that's okay. <laughs> Interesting. And, and yeah, um, but that would still be our team. Yeah, it's still within council work. Got it. Got it. I just, I guess I'm going back to ex exporting. How would that export if we would export it? separately but then would there be a way to combine them into one spreadsheet without having to do multiple into one spreadsheet into, without having to do multiple question. exports off the top of my head i'm not sure about combining task lists in yeah. that way and can you print like if you at the at the um there's several lines to refer to but under at the top where you say Group by bucket filter list. You have it set up now on board. If you click list, yeah, this, th it this is what I was going to. Uh, I really like this this part of Teams here. Uh, you can change how you view this tracking workbook. So now, where I was in the board view, which displays in much like you know you might see on a physical board, uh, this list. Well, it puts into a list. <laughs> yeah. You can see what it does. Uh, so you can kind of view more information at a glance this way, perhaps, including how many uh, check, mark, check marks in a checklist are you know completed. Um, so that could be handy. Click on the priority column, if you would. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can organize yeah. by priority. You can organize by priority, who is it assigned to. Uh, the due date, which buckets it, it is in, um, maybe other stuff. Let me get zoom out of the Does way. The due date and the priority level. Do they talk to one another? So to speak, I would assume they would. Progress. <clears throat> uh, what do you mean there? But, well, if you have a due date that's coming up sooner, does that get a higher priority uh, automatically? Or oh, I think you have to self-select the okay. priority. Uh, yeah, no, that's. My understanding. Yeah. Um, so that's a list view. The charts view is really neat. Uh, I'm someone who likes data. So uh, this will display your task list in a way that you can, at a glance, see you know how many tasks are not started yet, how many are in progress or late. If uh, you know who's kind of pulling their weight, so to say, you know who who has the most work here. Maybe shuffle around priorities. Oh, well, the priority here is a separate uh, box. How many members are part of uh, which tasks? Uh, so I like that a lot. Uh, and then also there's a schedule view, which will put this into more of a calendar. So there are plenty of ways to view all of this information. And that's what I like most about Teams. Any questions so far? Well, I think if I could get you to, if you don't mind, go back to the list view again, which I confess is my favorite, may not be everybody's. But if you click on the assigned to column, and then you can go down, yeah, and you can sort. Well, you can actually, I think, find just the ones that apply. You can filter for a keyword. Yeah, right. It yeah, looks like a, it filters by whoever's assigned first. So that's helpful to know. Like if you're, yes, if you're but first if you put on the like, list. If you put somebody's name in there, put my name in Dan, and then just guess. No. The, 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 are, are, is it is it is it Danielle? I don't think so, but maybe not. Uh, what's going on? No, maybe you're not by anything, Dan. You're all set. You're not doing this to me. It's fine. Anyways, I mean, you can see them because they're sort of come up Not with a filter by first name, but yeah, that's it. Filter. Maybe you go by assignment. Oh, oh, oh. there we go. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. You have to click your name. <clears throat> yeah. So then there's all the tasks that I have been assigned to. But I think they're the only, only the ones that your name is assigned to in the first position because there were others where you were in like the third and fourth position. That are uh, unless I, I think maybe perhaps because I had this, is that you think that was the case, Kristen? I that was based on the list. Okay. Well, 
Okay. If you go back to the list, you can see it better. Alphabetical, but first. I'll just scroll down. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it wasn't like that. Oh, maybe it is alphabetical. I'm, I might be wrong. Sorry. I might have thought, I think I might have thought Doug's was Dan's. <laughs> so, Dan, you said the list view is how you prefer it. Um, that's perfectly fine because all of you on your separate computers can view this. Yeah, any any old way we want. Yeah. What are the um, little um, icons where it looks like half circle filled in? On that's the, uh, that? in progress. In progress. Yeah. Okay. Is it half empty or half full? <laughs> 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 so, what I've just gone over is really the meat and potatoes of how you folks can utilize this council work team within Microsoft Teams. Now, now you can also, I, I saw you can also just see it on activities or activity on the activity tab. Up here at the top. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll show you everything that's happened <clears throat> um, within your teams, not just the council work team, but also like my chats with people, uh, on over here, right. my chats with people. Yeah. And this is the only thing I've got on this yeah. team, so that's why it, yeah. it's, it, okay. Actually, to answer Krista's question before, if you go back into um, list and you go into filter, and not to scare you, Doug, but you select Doug's name. Oh, boy. <laughs> Doug's going to walk out here and just uh, that's what I'm stuff. He's <laughs> Yeah. So, the graph of the things I've accomplished, not just the things that I'm still You can, about. but to answer Krista's question, you see where, like the third one down, Doug's not the first name in the list. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. So she's a filter function. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting that it only works if you click on the name, though, not if you put the name in search. Yeah, this must be filtering. It must be looking in like. The notes comments. sections or in the, the yeah sections. in the contents yeah. yeah yep and then you so I suppose you screen. could go up there yeah. and you could put yeah. in self storage and see what it brings back public input there you go yeah <laughs> yeah and there you go <laughs> revise it <laughs> <laughs> okay let's get working on that thing. <laughs> April oh, food. and then the other thing here is if you want to message uh, or if you want to video call the people in this team, you can do that easily just by coming up here, which I don't think you folks would do because it needs to be public. Does the <laughs> video call work? Um, <clears throat> like sometimes Nate would set up a Teams meeting or yeah. or does it work more like FaceTime where you can just make a live? The, oh, I think you probably schedule a meeting. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, so you can either have an impromptu meeting where everybody just gets a notification, says, hey, Krista wants to meet right now, or you can schedule a meeting, obviously, for a later date. Or you can just, you just use the call function. On some, yeah, yeah. For, you know, and you can add people for anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm just not, the calls isn't showing on my app, but that might be because I'm on a map. Yeah, no. <laughs> just, we, we can get you a Windows. Yeah. No more than two council members. That, well, right. Right, it's, yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, yeah, we can make all kinds of FOIA mistakes with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, yeah, if we use the chat function. I don't think we could. I mean, I if I, you know, if, if you were, if you wanted to talk to Ann about a date or something, or Ann, you know, wanted to talk to somebody else about something, I think that would be okay. But I mean, the, the, yeah, the chat function is essentially like, texting or emailing i mean right can you access it for FOIA requests yeah. the chat yeah. okay so we yeah yes all of this stuff all of it is extractable for us for FOIA requests just say no no i no i I'm, i would like to know that it is so that we make sure we're doing things yeah <laughs> it, it's and it's not just that you can get at it kyle it's it's that we mistakenly misuse it yeah for essentially discussions or meetings that aren't public. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I think at least for us, uh, we are, we generally should probably only be using it as a project management tool to track our projects, not so much yeah. as a chat function or. That's the safest route, I think. Yes. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Safe, safest route. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, now that I've gotten a better look at what's in here, I, I think I'd be more comfortable editing mm -hmm. um, going forward. And I know that was Sandy was doing that before with the workbook. So I think if, we, if we're all comfortable using this, I can treat this like the workbook from here on out. And just, um, it sounds like we'd be more comfortable adding progress updates in the notes section rather than the comments because that's editable. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I, I would agree with that. I don't know how others feel. With you guys here, just a question. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, excuse me, how the bucket should be organized? Would it be organized by the point council person and or would you want it structured by department, like public works, land use? If you're going to go through, you follow me? If you're going to go through, you might want to it would seem as though you guys would be on the same page with the manner in which the buckets are put together. Yeah, that's a good question, Doug. I I don't think the spreadsheet differentiated by department. It, no. it me if I'm wrong, but I think we could start utilizing some different buckets. Um, and just uh, so you're aware, you can also add labels. So like say you wanted like public works to be pink, mm. you can do something like that. Can you filter by those labels if oh, yeah. if you need to? And I mean, well, I will. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, I think you should, definitely should. Once in the said, case well, of, I think, come on, can I in, the, in the case of responsibility for departments, like it would be assigned to Doug or to Krista or to Justine or to Britt or to Anthony or you know, sort of pick one. I would think that sorting on the department's head name would get us essentially the same thing without having to create another layer. There is. I do worry about <clears throat> layering things because and, and having everybody have the same understanding of the layer and then going from one council to the next and explaining the layering. Um, I think the simplest structure we can assign would in the long run will be the best so yeah saying, i agree so you're saying just leave the just leave um whoever's relevant to the team under the ass assignments within the task rather than creating these different buckets that's my suggestion at least to start i mean yeah. if it, we find out it doesn't work we can do something else but you know i do worry a little bit about you know, making it complex. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable and I haven't got dementia yet, so I'm still in it, but it's, it's, you know. Uh, I, 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 I would agree. I think to start, maybe we don't need the buckets, but I I would like to use the comments feature for handoffs. I, I cause I, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but wouldn't someone get a notification if there's a comment made? Yes. Yeah, so if we're handing it off, um, perhaps we can put that in the comments, like whoever completed it and your whoever, you know, your turn next to so and so. I don't so know. can we designate to, does everybody on the team automatically get a comment or um or just yeah. the person that you or want to direct it to? No, so yeah, that's in, in a good. comment you can you no, so everyone's gonna see the comment. You can't necessarily well actually unless you just like do something like that. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, but it, it would be everyone would get the uh, comment who's assigned to that task. Not everyone in right. Not everyone in the whole right. team. So right now, yeah. Doug would really only get the notification that there's a comment because he's the only one here right now assigned to this particular task. Right. Right. But that, yeah. I mean, that's useful, too, right? if everybody on the team gets the notification, because then it's, you know, everybody has been at least informed that, uh, you know, I'm handing it off to Dan or whoever. And, and um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Let me show you folks one more thing. So when you are done with the project, 
you can just click uh, right here, the little mark task as complete button. It'll disappear. It goes down, goes all the way down to the completed tasks list. And it's okay. right there. And it doesn't go away. It does not go away. Okay. If you do want it to go away, you can delete no. it. But, um, and then if you want to be put it back up into in progress, just click that again and it'll return to where it was. Is there a way to prevent stuff from getting deleted off this list? Because theoretically nothing should be deleted from the list. Yeah, I. that's a good question. If I can recover deleted items, I'll make a note of that to find out. Okay. It, uh, because everything we close should stay. Maybe we have to come up with a, another status or something. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe that's... Um, you know, we kind of have the open, we have future, we have closed, and we have never going to do it. I mean, those are kind of the bu old buckets. Well, maybe we should have buckets within this for stuff like, you know, for just those things that you're saying. Well, like, that's what I'm wondering. Or labels. Oh, yeah, we could have labels instead. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can sort by labels, right? Yes. Well, I mean, but the priority they're prioritized already, you know, but the ones we're never gonna do are the <clears throat> low priority ones, right? You can sort yeah, well, no, the, the low priority are technically ones we still plan on doing. They're just not high priority. They're, but then there's a whole other bucket in the work, in the what was the workbook of uh, things that have been brought to us that we literally are never gonna touch. We've, yeah. We've decided we're not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. Whereas the, the low like priority is the someday maybe list. Yeah. Right. And then there's a closed list of things we've, yeah. we've completed. And the labels can be changed, right? So if we make a mistake there, we can undo it. Yeah, you can you can create new labels. You can edit labels. Uh, like I just, I did one here. I chose the pink color for, and I renamed it public works. You can do that with any of these. Yeah, the, the color doesn't do anything for me personally, but so long as you can the name associated with yeah. it. Yeah. I like to have some color in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it makes sense to me that we have to have a bucket of things we're not going to do. If, if we've got, you know, that could be a separate bucket. Yeah. Okay. I think the best way to do this is just to start using it and yeah. stuff's going to come up and we're going to say, I don't like that. And then we can change how we're. Yeah. This is one of those things. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think, though, the comments thing is still kind of a, you know, like if you looked at the one, one that popped up there for a second, I'm looking at, you know, the revised self-storage one, for instance, that I was in. And the notes are essentially the old block of text yeah. um, that we had in the spreadsheet. Yeah, I remember her doing that. And if I want to print one of these cards to call it, I guess that's what they are. If I wanted to print one of those cards, how would I do it? Print one of the cards. Uh, so I don't know. So are you talking? So I could tell you how we can export this information for like reporting purposes. Is that what you're referring to? Or do you want to actually just print what you see on this card as you see it? Well, my that was my first thought, but if there's a reporting function, maybe that- Yeah, you want to show us the reporting function? Yeah. Just briefly, if you can. I will definitely. Um, so it's under, you have to go to planner, I think. Hold on. I'd, I know. I've done this a couple of times. Have a, in a while. <laughs> you have to go to the web interface, I believe, which I'm doing right now. And okay, so tracking council work. Okay, yeah. So what, what I'm looking at right now is basically just the online web browser version of what we were just in for Teams. Okay. okay. And can you get uh, that via Edge too, or what was that? Can you get that via Edge too? Yep, that's what I'm in right now. Oh, all right. You said planner, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, but that's the name of the platform, the online platform, right? Yeah, it's called Microsoft Planner. Yeah. Oh, this... There's like a billion <laughs> Microsoft labeled applications. Oh, okay. But they all they're all accessed via Edge, is what you're saying? 
They could be. Yeah, you can use any web browser, but I happen to be using Edge because that's what okay. I use for, for work and personal. Um, so it's in this interface where I can export the plan to Excel. I'm also curious just what the plan settings. Oh, you can change the background. Okay. Backgrounds and notifications. So see, so right here, what's enabled is that when someone assigns a task to me, I would get a notification. And they could also let you know if you're coming up against your due date or you're late. So that could be kind of handy. But anyway, okay. So uh, I can export this plan to Excel. And it was created and downloaded that quickly. What did you click on that? So there are the three little buttons right here and then export plan to Excel. And it will pop up in Excel. So your eyes might go cross-eyed here looking at this to begin with. So we don't need the task ID. The task ID looks like it's just some wonky, you know, backend designation for Microsoft. So I'm going to go ahead. Just for the machine. Yeah. And I'll just tweak this. Uh, so you have the task name, the bucket name, the progress. Let me put these in bold. Uh, the progress, the priority, who is it assigned to, who it was created by. That's interesting. Uh, the creation date, start date, the due date. Is this a recurring task? Uh, none of these are right now. Is it late? Nope. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, the completion date, if it is already completed. Uh, how many check list items have been completed? A one of, so that's not a date. That's like two of Correct. three that's or two five or three. of three. Yeah, okay. exactly. So this is just a dump of the whole thing, basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to reformat it to look nicer, but but the descriptions in the in the notes are that's yes, what that is. That's right? the notes. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah is so this is could be handy if we ever wanted to provide all of this information to the public pretty easily. The public should be able to. Well, yeah, we can definitely show the public this information this way. Yeah, it's not very friendly, and it would take a lot of a fair amount of fiddling about in order to well, make it presentable. Can't you just copy the notes and uh, paste them in a Word doc? You could do that too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you I mean, can do anything things. in Excel that you would otherwise. No, but I mean, in the previous one, I mean, without even going to the the Microsoft Planner, oh, um, you could just copy it and copy the notes right there. Yeah. Can't you? Yeah, can you copy those? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I can manipulate yeah. that. Control but you something. lose, you lose the rest of it. But yeah, I mean, that yeah. You, you, if you go to that, if you go to the ellipse, you can just copy task, right? What does that look like? Oh, this I believe will allow like, you to copy. That would duplicate the task in them. Yeah, and you can put it into another workbook if you want. Oh, I see. Hmm. So taking taken together, pretty robust. Uh, you know, I love using this just for my own work purposes and, you know, a uh, larger or medium-sized team like you folks, uh, I think could really make use of it. And it's pretty flexible. You can designate whatever kind of organizational structure you want. And uh, importantly, it is exportable. Maybe not in a super friendly way, but you could also just like screenshot these charts if you if you want and uh, you know share that. Yeah, I'm just. I mean, we had we did have the workbook up for the public to digest if yeah, they wanted to on right. the website. So mm -hmm. um, we might want to you know export what we're working on occasionally and update. Yeah, like maybe so, weekly or, or weekly yeah. Or I don't think it needs to be weekly, but <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe quarterly. Can update the task list um, on the website with an export. Yeah, that was a question I had for the group. Is is yeah. there a routine that we should be responsible for? So, in other words, if mm -hmm. I I'm assigned a bunch of tasks, should once a month I go in and put some update on that task, or is quarterly? Um, I mean, I I think yeah, I think if you're assigned to a task, I think it makes sense for you to be updating it 
Um, I think the frequency probably depends on the work, but I would say anytime there's a development on, like we, yeah, you know, yeah. if we move forward on some element of a task, then you could just put a note in there with any update. Okay, Other, so there's no expectation that I do it more routinely than that. I mean, I we didn't have that expectation with the workbook, so I don't. Well, there was a, there, we couldn't share the workbooks. I, I'm just, I'm not looking for work. I'm just asking if people <laughs> think that's important. I think as long as we just keep it as up to date as we can, as work progresses, that makes sense. It's, it's not, I don't think it's meant to be, I mean, we don't work like that. We don't work every day, you know, so. We don't? <laughs> well, so, no, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, we do, but yeah. Can I just no, throw I'm out an example? Uh, um, so if I have a meeting with MDOT or something like that, and, and I wanted to update the village project, um, I would go in and use the notes and and uh, and maybe have a few categories. I mean, I, so I'm still, I'm kind of with Dan wrestling on how to format this. Um, excuse me. Um, if I, um, you know, there's discussion and then there's next steps and, and to-dos and um, you know, so I, I'm not sure exactly how best to structure that, but maybe that'll evolve. You know, and um, yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm, I'm actually having second thoughts about the whole comment thing. I mean, it feels like the comments would actually sort things in a better way. I'm yeah. still concerned about the making a mistake, but I suppose if I screw up and make a mistake, I can add another comment to correct. Yeah, yeah. you could exactly. just put one right above it. Whoops. <laughs> because I, the, you know, and I'm, I'm looking still, I'm looking at the comprehensive plan coordinators report right now, just for yucks. And it just gives me the willies because it looks very much like the old spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, Kyle, when you did the export, did it, I don't know if we had any comments, but did it export comments on that? There might have been one. No. Uh, interesting. Uh, I'm trying to see the last. It would be. No, so if it was here, yeah. it would probably be like Matthew's comment would be here or something. But it does. Although I like that it keeps the formatting of what the notes section looked like. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's just it's funny. You can't just delete a comment. Well, it does. It does include the checklist. Maybe, maybe we should utilize the checklist mm -hmm. for different parts. Mm -hmm. um, like if you complete something or there's an update. Yeah. Like the one thing Microsoft doesn't do. How do that is strange. How do folks feel about using the checklist as a status update? So you, you would just go oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say we can try it. I... Yeah, I mean, I, so the checklist really uh, that those are the subtasks, like you were saying earlier, yeah. Krista, right? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, it, it is helpful, I think, to use this the checklist i was thinking in my mind that i would do that um and just to kind of break things into next steps and and assign responsibility for them or uh you know who at least who needs to be involved in the conversation and then um you know but i there is a i guess here's a question uh, is there a, a reminder kind of function where um you know, Microsoft will come back and say, hey, Ann, you had something you was due on the 7th and you you haven't done it yet. You know, it's yeah. that deadline's coming up. That's, that's what I just learned when I went to the web interface here. I clicked on the ellipses. I went to plan settings. Mm -hmm. And right now under notifications, it's not enabled right now, but it, you can get a notification when a task assigned to you is late due today or due in the next seven days. Okay. But that's not for the subtasks, that's for the uh, overall right. tasks. Okay. So I think if okay, you yeah. wanted to utilize that function, we would just need to change the due date and have it be relevant to whatever current task you're working on and not so much the overall mm. item. I, I would say... You know, we can't really... 
we can't really break it. I mean, <laughs> no, no, don't maybe, say that. You know, maybe we sort of all go into it for our tasks and, um, you know, no, regroup and compare you. notes. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like the idea of, I mean, it, it can be overwhelming, especially for somebody who's not really computer savvy. Yeah, and so I, that's my biggest concern. Um, it's a prerequisite for joining the council. Right. I mean, it's like, a, is that part it's, of the, you know, what you have to yeah. sign on for when you, when you jump in the game? I don't know. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think it, it makes sense to me to kind of keep it simple and, and not, um, not be too complicated you know, if we can increase the complexity over time, but I don't think we're going to lose by or, or create too many problems for ourselves by keeping it somewhat simple at this point, recognizing, you know, that it's a powerful tool and could do a lot more. But for our purposes, just what is what are the most critical things that we want to do? We want to identify our task, you know, our overall task list kind of by priority. And um Maybe I, I really, the, you know, breaking out the subtasks makes a lot of sense to me. I think it's an easier way to, to, you know, sort of manage the project. And potentially for a big project like the village uh, that has players coming in and out of it at different times, I, there's there's a lot of value to having yeah. a single place where you can go for all that background information. And so is there a is there a way, Kyle, for us to upload documents to uh, you know, kind of the way you would to Google Docs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you can either add a document to a task itself just by clicking add attachment. Okay. In which case, you can select from either the, the team files up here or add from your computer. Or yep. you can just have a Google Drive-esque or OneDrive-esque repository uh, in the files tab up top here. But that would be related to the whole team Correct. and not individual tasks. Right. Uh, one question, it looked like you couldn't, could you upload from a OneDrive on the tasks? It yep. didn't look like. Yeah, yep. he said, oh, he said he could. Said from the files, which is up there on the text. So you can either do one from your computer, in which case, so since this computer, like I showed you before, has OneDrive listed as a place I can grab files yeah, from. Mine doesn't if, have if, that. if I were just do from computer, I can then just pick OneDrive and all of my OneDrive files are right here. Okay. Oh, that's uh, awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great. And then yeah. team, team files is the files tab up here. And then a link to a URL that's interesting. Um, let's see. If somebody else has shared storage or something like that. Yeah. Or... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, see, for my computer, I don't have OneDrive on mine. Yeah, so that it, right? there, there is a way. Yeah, I'm talking my head. I can't tell oh. you. Oh, okay. I mean, I have it on the web-based apps, but then I, but it. Yeah, uh, we it we can get. I could I could write up a tutorial or do a video tutorial and send it to you folks on how to add OneDrive to your computer's file explorer. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. It seems like it'd be useful. Maybe it's already on mine. Sorry, I was right. Okay, good. Good. Well, you have so if you have town, yeah, uh, so if you have a computer. town computer, Muhammad probably went ahead and already did that. I think I need to get a town. I don't mean to have an expense. Yeah, I think, no, I, I'm just not functional. I think you might be able to use Nate's laptop. What, what I've a, had that problem, Krista. Yeah, this is not my Mac. for me on the Mac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I yeah I think if we could just all go into um, things we're currently working on, um, and then I can be responsible for the rest and try to keep updating as we go. You might want to try to organize subtasks, like Ann, you said you wanted to utilize those. Yeah, um, and I think we can try using the comments, but if we're finding it's not working, we can go back to just using the notes part. Um, does anyone want to use the label functions for departments? Like Kyle created this one that says public works, or do we just want to rely on assignments based on persons within the task? I like that last one myself. Okay. Um, the, the, the persons? Yeah, the people yeah. that are assigned within the task. 
So like Doug was the, you know, planning department head. And so instead of creating a planning department label, it would just be. Yeah. Head Doug. yeah. I don't know. I mean, who, who, I guess this is really just the council's uh, project management and, and uh, would the, if they're not identified as part of the team, <clears throat> the department heads wouldn't uh, be dealing with this. Right. right, they would have to be identified as part of the team to get, but I imagine it's mostly going to be you and your team, Doug, dealing with this. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and um, the other thing I just, you know, the one concern I have about labeling it by in individual council member is that, um, in you know, you know, if somebody rotates off the council or resigns and all of a sudden all these tasks that are relevant to an ongoing project are no longer part of, like that person isn't even on the council anymore. So I, I guess uh, what we could do is just migrate that stuff over somehow. Yeah, so to it's all still part of, the, it would still, re correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, if someone left suddenly, kind of like okay. Nate did, we or would Mike. still see right we, we they would still all their work would still all be yep. in this bucket yes. so and we could all access the council chair is the owner of the team yep. so that but they if, could go in and reassign it but say say we delete michael then from that not to pick on him but to use him as a real world example does all of does everything associated with his name then leave not from here okay maybe that's a council workshop where the remaining members of the council divide up the tasks that were assigned to Michael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would all still be retained within this team's app environment, environment whatever you want to call them. Even if you removed his name, okay. Yeah. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yeah. <laughs> like I could remove anybody. I could remove anybody, even if there was a- yeah, yeah. There was no one assigned. Yeah. Like what if there was yeah. nobody there? It would just exist. It would just exist. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> it would have a life of its own. Yeah. yeah. That's a real thing. You might want to leave someone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sidewalks, yeah. We need sidewalks. Um, Okay. How how comfortable? I mean, I, I would assume, I mean, I'm probably gonna be touching most of it, but I don't I don't I haven't gone through the list and what's on here, but I was thinking of adding um I don't think we've added stuff from our old workbook that has been closed or I don't think we have the moderate. I think we have just the high the open stuff. I don't think right. we, there were other tabs that I feel like right. haven't been captured here. And I'm so I might go through an old version and try to add those as different buckets if everyone's okay with that. Yeah. That'd okay. be great. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I think some of that's there's a massive amount of information by in budget tab. That's yeah, not, there's a budget tab. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know if that becomes, you know, if if that becomes like every year there's an annual budget task. And so we create a new budget task each year or. Yeah, we might want to have a diff, can we, we could make a different budget team, right? Yeah, could do that. Yeah. So a whole team just for budget. Or could you have things under council work that, so we have right now tr council tracking workbook, but that could be. You could add could another, add another so like this public works yeah. one is, is, is a new. But that could be budget. Yeah, it could be. Or FY25 budget. Whatever. Or whatever. Yeah, sure it can. Yeah, I might I might want to separate out budget from this overall tracking workbook. I feel like it's a yearly thing that's its own beast. Um, uh, again, I think we experiment with it. And when we run into a hiccup, we punt, come up with another idea. OK. Yeah, I think that's right. We're gonna. This is gonna be kind of a an organic process as we yeah. find our way through it. Another another example of us building the plane while we try to fly it. Well, that's unlike you know, just like every other organization that takes Absolutely. on this new technology, right? Well, or software. On your pilot. I read an interesting. Um, I was I was reading about President Eisenhower and a quote that he said where um, planning is insta is uh, indispensable, but plans are useless. <laughs> and and uh, I, 
I thought that that was. He might have known something about that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, kind of um, a helpful way to sort of look at it because, yeah. you know, you spend all the time planning, but then inevitably stuff changes because you're, you plan, you plan, you plan, and then you cope. Um, Matthew, you, you were asking a question about the buckets. So I, I don't think it would be by priority. It would be things like closed clo closed stuff we've already completed or um, the like the things we're never going to work on right. or um, and then maybe I'll create a different budget, a budget tab. Or I don't know what to call that. Is it a tab? Is it a, yes. Up yeah, there tab the tab, on the yeah. top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we, I, this has been helpful. I um, yeah. with actual content in there because I when we were looking at it before, it was um, just a lot of those Street test tabs. <laughs> <gibberish. laughs> um, but yeah, I think we just need to use it. So uh, I did copy one of these cards, and I don't know where. <laughs> where it, oh, where you don't know where it went. <laughs> Thanks for card somewhere. <laughs> That's my fault. Okay. Oh. Is it the, the develop and implement sidewalk construction standards? Because there are two of them. Now. Oh, yeah, there are two. There, are two. there it is. Yeah. I think it's probably the one without assignments on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's election day. Oh, uh, yeah. Can I ask? I tried, I'm trying to attach a document to a card. I went into the hit the button, shows my computer. I see OneDrive in the list. But when I click on OneDrive, um, there's nothing there. And maybe you are not signed into your yeah. OneDrive on that computer. Right. Oh, so I would have to be signed into OneDrive in addition yeah. to Teams. I'm going to delete yeah. the card. Are you, That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. The one that doesn't have are you signed. Are you on the town computer? I am, yes. I'm in uh, the meeting on my Mac, but I'm playing with yeah. my town computer. Um, when you look at OneDrive in your file explorer, do you see any files? Mm, yep. Okay, so it does sound like you are signed in. Uh, so if you, so so Dan, you went to add attachment, and then did you click from computer like this? Correct. And then that opens up your file explorer. And then you go over to OneDrive Gray Main, as I'm doing on the screen. Uh, that's interesting. My OneDrive isn't labeled Gray Main. It just says OneDrive. Okay. Um, it sounds like if you if you stop in, uh, I can get that sorted out for you. Okay. And that goes for any of you. Unless okay. it's unless it's Mac. I won't I even. Think touch I just it. figured it. I just. Oh. I just found a Dan slash gray main, and that looks like it has my. That's probably. And it has the OneDrive um, icon. I don't know why it's titled differently, but I found it. Sorry. Okay. 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 Does anyone have any burning questions for Kyle here? Or I think we just got to use it, but. Yeah. I'll manage, I guess. Okay, Marty. <laughs> we'll, we'll try not to give you too many things. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks, oh, my pleasure. Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I love doing this stuff. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Kyle. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I should just work for Microsoft. Really yeah, nice. you should have. Yeah. Right. But you couldn't walk to work if you lived in gray. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you work remotely. It'd be worth going to Seattle, though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks.